Welcome back, traders and investors. I'm Brianna Valeski here with Joel Elkan, and we've got Jeremy Newsom on the line. He's the CEO of Real Life Trading. Jeremy, thanks for joining us today. How are you doing this morning? My pleasure. No, thank you so much for having me. I truly appreciate it. I'm doing great. How about yourself? How are you guys? We are doing great. We're in the heart of earnings season right now, and there's lots of crazy news, especially when it comes to UPS. So we had, you know, they announced their expected Q4 results. Looks like we gave back all of the gains from the past two months. I mean, how do you approach that when you get big news on a stock like that? Do you use fundamentals? Do you use technicals? What are you looking at in that? Man, man Brianna, that's a phenomenal question. Um, you, so you have the chart pulled up right now, or someone does. Can you guys flip over to the daily for me on UPS? You got it. And I'll, yeah, I'll kind of I'll kind of give you guys an insight to what I look at. Uh, I actually love earnings season because I'm a day trader, and uh, day trading. Well, I also swing trade, as you guys know. But day trading is really how you take advantage of gaps like UPS um, or really any kind of gap at all. So I'll give you guys an example. Um, so right now we have four pretty strong green bars or green candles coming off from 109 to 114, and what I do in earnings season and really any kind of gaps is I, I'm asking myself. What would people think if they bought at 114 or 112 or 111? Because we know someone did because they had to, right? Because there's a bunch of green candles. So if UPS is opening down at 104.60 and some change, you're what's called trapped, right? Anyone who bought pretty much at any point above 107 is losing money. Um, someone's going to have stops in place at 110 or 109 or 108. But a lot of people are going to have stops below those pivots, uh, below the technical chart pivots. And those pivots would be, you know, 108 and 106. So if we get below there, um, I can almost guarantee that UPS is going to drop pretty significantly in the morning uh, very, very quickly. Because, you know, people's stops are going to get hit. People are freaking out. You know, they're losing uh, almost 10% of their investment in one minute. Um, yeah, they're going, to, they're going to be selling pretty hard. So if they're selling... I'm gonna to try to do my best to sell with them. And, really? Uh, I'm gonna be looking for some. Yeah, I'll be looking for some shorting opportunities. On you're UPS. you're gonna you're gonna join this bloodbath then here uh, down 103 because we are very very uh, far below those uh, those levels that you mentioned. Uh, actually, we just exactly. made, yeah, we just made a low at 103.20. Uh, do you try and you try and get anything? Do you do any pre market trading? I don't do a lot of free market trading. Um, I do proprietary trading. Do you know what that is, Joel? Proprietary? Well, of course. Right, right. Okay, so I figured. Yeah. So I, I, mean, I do a, little, a dabble every now and then before the market. Um, in a, an example like this on UPS, I'll take a few a few, uh, a few shares short. But in my opinion, I'm pretty much all day, I'm going to actually be looking at UPS with a bearish perspective. Now, of course, it could bounce bullish. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's the market. The market does whatever it wants to do at some point in the day. But uh, I will be keeping an eye out on a bearish perspective because there's so many people that are trapped. Um, you know, they're going to react emotionally. I mean, think about it. If you, you know, let's say we had a normal job, right? We were going into the nine to five grind, and we were talking to the guy next to us in the cubicle, and he was like, "Oh man, I'm just getting hammered on UPS." And uh, I'm like, "What would you do?" You know, he would sell. You know, because he's he's afraid. He doesn't have protective puts. He doesn't have a stop in place. He just is about to get taken to the woodshed, and uh, there's going to be a lot of selling on UPS. So. I'll be okay. keeping an eye out to go short. Absolutely. Okay, so you don't care if it's down eight bucks, nine bucks, ten bucks, eleven bucks. You're just gonna, you know, perhaps uh, focus in on some of your shorter term charts. I don't know if you're gonna short. You're not gonna short it into this open here. Would you mind shorting it at, let's say, it opened right here at 104? I mean, is that you know you're comfortable shorting this thing ten bucks, or do you kind of sit the first few minutes out, see what happens, get a little reaction? Because, you know, I look at it too, and uh, the perspective is, you know, if just. You know, you're talking about the people that bought it at 108, 109, 110, 111, 12, all those. I'm thinking about all the people that shorted it at 111, 111 and a half, 112, all the way up, and they were just holding their breath. It was closed to 114, <laughs> right? Yeah. And I'm looking at yeah. the perspective oh, yeah. where if I was, you know, shorter-term trader and I had this thing shared overnight, I don't know, man. I, I think I'd be like, whew, that's a pretty big, then pretty big windfall. I agree with you. I agree. There's, here's what's interesting. I'm glad you asked because you're specifically asking about the time frame um, on UPS. What I call this type of gap, and there's, I mean, there's so many names out there, but um, 
oh, I forget her name. What she she's been on your show, I think, a few times. Anne Marie. Uh, Swo- Anne Marie. Uh, no, not Anne. Well, not Anne Marie, but yeah. Well, I, I know Anne Marie, but the, the swoosh trader. You guys remember her? Uh, Melissa Armo. I think her name is. Uh, no, I'm not familiar. No, no. You're but not anyways, well, what, what's her strategy? Uh, well, anyway, what I was going to say is, I mean, there there really are just there's tons and tons and tons of names for what I'm about to tell you. But I mean, I call it a gap and go. Um, I'm gonna wait two minutes for this trade, and one of two things is gonna happen. If it gaps down and it starts getting huge buying pressure in the first two minutes, I'll wait it out um, probably 30 minutes later and see what it does. If in the first two minutes it kind of trades sideways and there's a lot of indecision, I'm ready to take it short below the two minute low. Um, because the daily chart, right? You have a big white candle. The hourly chart, big white candle from yesterday. 15-minute chart, white candle from yesterday, and the five-minute chart, white candle from yesterday. So there's not tons of people shorting the stock as of yesterday. I mean, it's all buying candles, all of them, uh, on the on the important time frames. So if this gaps down, I'm looking I'm looking forward to continue. Um, okay. And again, you know, go with anything. the trend. No. Do hey, I tell you, yeah. there's a lot yeah. of people that are going to be trying to buy the dip in this thing today, and it's definitely For sure. you know For you're sure. you're going with the trend here. So that definitely. Mm-hmm. How did how did you choose that two minute time frame in order to spring into action? Just because it's uh, they're gonna be it's gonna be so so quick uh, when it does move. I mean, I'm gonna do you know the, I'm gonna look for the two minute, and if it doesn't start triggering, then I'm absolutely gonna just hop over to the five minute candle and just wait thirty to forty to minutes, maybe an hour, and see if it uh, like you said, if it does bounce, which I agree, I mean it, it really could in the first minute. It's either gonna bounce or fall, and we're gonna find out very quickly. Um, if it does bounce, I'm going to look forward to pull into some type of moving average and uh, hopefully roll over. Okay. So, and what else? It's uh, going to be interesting, yeah. Will you, will you go pick on the FedEx at all, or are you just going to stay with the hot stock? Um, let's, what, what, let's hop over to FedEx. What is it uh, trading at pre-market? Uh, it's actually holding up really well here. I mean, this is issue-specific news to uh, UPS. Uh, you got an initial drop to 175 even. But it's recovered nicely, actually, after hitting 175. Uh, you got back up to close to 178, currently trading at 177.48. Only trading down $3.92 uh, compared with, uh, you know, the carnage and the UPS. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Um, yeah, FedEx does look nice. Like I said, it is recovering. Um, the gap is definitely not as strong on FedEx, but... It is pretty, you know. If we if we stay below 177 at the open, so we're taking out that um, that wick or that candle low from 120, we got below there, and uh, there's definitely going to be some people a little bit upset, but it won't be as strong as a gap unless we really opened below 160, uh, 168, 66. Okay, all right. FedEx. And, um, you know, we had some good action yesterday uh, with the ECB. It was kind of telegraphed a little bit. Beautiful, yeah. How do you like to trade those? Do you, tra- do you try and position yourself ahead of the news and then, you know, let the news, uh, you know, filter out and exit your positions? Because yesterday was a tough one. I mean, you had a, a rally and then a, basically a 20-point drop off the open, and then it just turned around and rallied 35 handles. Uh, were you able to position yourself accordingly? It was wild, right? It was crazy. Uh, I knew that there was a lot of stuff going on yesterday with ECB, and there was definitely a lot of news factoring in the market. Um, and <laughs> what a surge we had yesterday. I, so I do kind of expect a little bit of a pullback, a little bit of a rest today. It's almost like a hurdle runner. You know, at the Olympics, so I think this is the hurdle that we need to get over. Um, so he's going to rest. You know, he's going to take a little bit of a breather. But uh, what I was doing yesterday um, was Wednesday, actually, as I was coming into the ECB, I was doing a weekly bull put spread, and that's all I had on the uh, the overall indices. So, for example, the SPY, Joel, I was looking at a weekly spread expiring today, uh, 197, 196 bull put spread. I didn't think we were going to drop below there, uh, again, because that was a really, really strong support. I was keeping my eyes on the 200 price level on SPY. So I was going to say, if we drop below 200 because of this news, you know, we might just go ahead and exit. But uh, right now it's looking good. So unless some cataclysmic issue uh, or event happens, we should just be okay on that spread. It'll expire worthless and uh, go to options heaven, which is always a good place for it to go. So you sold that. You sold that spread. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, I sold the 197, and uh, I have the 
196 as my protection. And so I mean, it was not a it was not a big big profit maker. I mean, it was only six cents, but uh, six cents on a dollar, six percent for three days is not too shabby. Right, and uh, no, we uh, I don't know if you listened at all earlier in the week. We have uh, Nick Shahinhan, and he's a market uh-huh. yeah market five maven, and he creates income with those option spreads. I mean. You know, it, I, I just for I, I just have a hard time doing those. I mean, I look at like, well, I'm selling six cents. Uh, my risk is four ninety four. Uh, but mm-hmm. you know, you have to, you know, you have to take into account, you know, the actual probability of those things happening. Do you do much in the weekly options? I do. Yeah. Um. I on my uh my trading floor, my live my live day trading room, we have on Wednesdays. I actually call it weekly Wednesdays. And we focus specifically on weekly spreads that expire that Friday, so two to three days. Uh, if you want, Joel, maybe we could get together. I can email you. We could chat back and forth. If you want me to help you with spreads, I mean, I'd be happy to. I'd be happy to help you as much as you need. Thank you, man. You're um, a good kid. Yeah. Just like all these little zingers <laughs> I got working here, they're always trying to help me with my computer, and you know, I do really stupid stuff. And Brent comes over this and like hits mouth. one button, and like, oh, that's all you need to do. But. Uh, Anyways, uh, Brianna's got a question for you. I do. Uh, Jeremy, we're going to start getting some of our tech earnings next week. So I want to get some of your thoughts on these names. I know you mentioned a few before the show. Uh, What are you looking at in Google right now? Uh, I I love Google as a kind of a long-term stock. I really, really, really do. Um, You you heard about the fiber optics they're going to start laying down? Really? I don't. I think I read a little bit about it, but not that much. So what What are they doing yeah, with that? Well, Kansas City, believe it or not, Kansas City was their target, uh, one of their first target markets, and Nashville will probably be one of them as well. But they're going to start laying down uh, fiber optic internet, and they're going to start providing internet services for approximately, I think it's sixty seven to eighty seven dollars a month or something like that. But it's a thousand, a uh, thousand megs a second, or is it megs or gigs? I forget which one. What is internet speed? Megs? Yeah, I think megs. Yeah, I think so. so. A thousand. So, like, right now, like, 50. Like, 50 is like, wow. You know, oh, my (laughs) gosh. 50 is like the fact. 50 is incredible. You know, you get 100, you're almost, you're in the, you know, the International Space Station. But a thousand? A thousand. It's it's almost like it would mind read what you're about to click on before you click on it. (laughs) That's insane. Yeah, it's so fast. So, I mean, they would have a huge control of the internet because not only are they providing the internet, but they have internet searches. I mean, I love Google long term. The fact that they have minis, the fact that they're five hundred bucks. Um, earnings on Google, I would expect uh, to gap up as well as Apple. Um, they probably have some huge, uh, huge expectations on earnings. Now, I will go ahead and say, this earnings season, um, I've been giving myself um, kind of I'm keeping track of what I'm, my earnings calls. I'm fifty percent. I have no idea what it's going to do on earnings. But usually what I do is after earnings, I take into consideration the gap and the sentiment, and that's kind of how I can figure out what it's going to do short-term, mid-term, and maybe a little bit longer-term. But I am bullish on Google and Apple long-term. It's hard not to be. Um, same with Amazon. Amazon earnings is coming right on the corner. Uh, there's a lot of talk about I, I can, or as I call them, I candy. Uh, it's bouncing hugely off of 285 with a phenomenal support on Amazon. Good volume, good candles. I think if it does gap down on Amazon, it's buy city. Um, buy it, and 285 is your stop. And that's otherwise, just hold it because you know if we start breaking out of what looks to be a huge descending triangle on Amazon, if we gap out of that, um, Amazon and its drones are going to fly to the moon. So it'll be really, really interesting to see. Yeah, you guys uh, have it that support at 285, so it's, it's going to be really interesting to see. But I think so. I would say Amazon gaps down a little bit and gets bought. Apple gaps up, um, and uh, Google gaps down and gets bought. That's just kind of my predictions, but I guarantee you I'll be one for three. <laughs> <laughs> if, I am, if I am three for three, you guys can invite me back. <laughs> okay. So what stocks did you discuss on one day, Wednesday for weekly option spreads? So Wednesday, um, I did Netflix. Uh, I often do Netflix, Amazon, Google, um, Tesla, and the indices. Wednesday specifically, um, I did Amazon. So on Amazon on Wednesday, we did a 282, 280 bull pit spread expiring today, which will, you know, should, again, unless something wild happens, um, be just fine. Um, 
SPY was the 197, 196 bull foot spread. The QQQs was the 99, 98 bull foot spread. Uh, and Netflix, we did exit Netflix at a small loss. Netflix, we had a 430, 435 bear call spread, or as I like to say, bear call spread. <laughs> I think it's falsetto. Um, the, <laughs> the bear call spread, uh, it was a, it's a 25 cent limit is what I was trying to get in at. And we exited at 45 cents. So we took a 15 cent loss, but it was one of those things where I figured if it was going to break 422, you know, it's going to keep going, and it did. So we went ahead and just exited it. Rather than unravel, we just took an exit on uh, Netflix. So a small loss on Netflix, which is actually the exact same thing we did last week on Netflix. Took a, uh, exited a little early for a very, very small game, uh, kind of like a break even. But ironically enough, the others um, on Weekly Wednesday, Tesla, Google, Amazon, Apple, those all played out perfect last week. And this week, um, Green Mountain Cough Roasters, that was the other one. Green Mountain Cough Roasters. Uh, one of my buddies and good traders, Chris Tom, did a 125, 124 expiring this Friday as well. Okay. So I'm a big fan of spreads. I like spreads. Yeah, selling that premium, I mean, I, I do it. I mean, because I bought enough options that have expired worthless uh, to know that the money's made on the selling side. So uh, good, good week for you here. <laughs> uh, this is just finish up here with this uh, this UPS here. And uh, I'll just tell you, I mean, we are trading on the lows of the pre-market session here, 103.20, 103 mm-hmm. and a quarter here. I mean, keep this, I mean, we got another half hour, or no, not half hour, another 12 minutes before you trade, but uh, just take a, a, a real jot down where that pre-market low is there and use that as your number for the day. Like if we, the pre-market lows, let's say it's 103.20 and it dips back like to 102.80, comes back above that 103.20. I don't know. I'm just, a, a, I mean, I shorten this thing today down 11 bucks. I, you know, be careful. All right, Jeremy? I agree. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be careful. I mean, I go into uh, any trade I take. I mean, I know exactly before I take it how much I'm going to lose. You know, it's without without question. It's not really a gamble. You know, a lot of people consider investing gambling, but it, you you know exactly how much you're going to lose if I go into this trade. So, I, oh yeah, I'll be totally fine, man. No worries. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll be uh, I'll be. I'll be safe. <laughs> All right. Jeremy Newsom. He's a 26 year old trader and CEO of Real Live Trading, uh, giving his comments on the markets, kind of echoing some of the sentiments of Nick Shaheen on, uh, on selling those, uh, those credit spreads or bull put spreads, bringing a little premium here on this Friday for the weekend. Jeremy, thanks a lot for joining us, and we're definitely going to have you on again soon. Awesome. I look forward to it. Thanks for the second time, guys. I look forward to the third. Have a phenomenal day. Enjoy your weekend, you two. Thanks so much, Jeremy. We'll talk to you soon. My pleasure. All right. See you guys.